Welcome back to Big Dan's Air Gun Review Channel. Today we're not going to be looking at a gun for the simple fact that, well at the best of times when customers bring their wives and girlfriends with them, I am at serious risk of being damaged when they find out that the boyfriend or husband is spending money on a gun. So imagine how much I'm under threat when it's Christmas time to go with it. So instead we're going to be looking at this harmless child's toy. On second thoughts, let's get back to looking at an air gun. Welcome back to Big Dan's Air Gun Review Channel. Today we're taking a, a look at a little gun that I, to be honest, have been interested in for quite a while. As a bit of a Webley geek, obviously I love all things usually with the Webley badge, and I thought, you know what, we've not looked at the VMX yet. So in front of us today we have the VMX Quantum. This is a budget Webley. We advertise these at bigdansairguns.co.uk at £180, or you can get the standard version without the shroud on the end. You can see there for £160, and that also includes testing and a free tin of pellets to go with it. Well, with that shameless plug out of the way, let's take a look now at the features and see what you get with your VMX. Okay, so features. As with all of our rifles, we start off at the rear of the rifle. One thing I really like about this gun is they are hearkening back to the Webleys of old, even with the butt pad. You can see there's a white cap on the go, and also, even as silly as it sounds, the coloration of the butt pad on this little gun. I like that. It's a nicely finished bit of kit, and I like little extra bits of detail that they've thrown onto here that they didn't really have to do. But, we have a butt pad. That's a good start. Let's move on. Slightly further up, and I'm pleased to report Lefties Rejoice, she is an ambidextrous rifle. You've got a nice amount of cheek piece on either side of the buttstock here, so I'm quite confident that all shooters will get comfortable with this little gun. Slightly further up, you've got a bit of checkering, which is always nice to see, especially on a budget gun, sub £200. We'll talk a bit more about that when we get to the handling section. And as we come up a tad, we do have another familiar sight to those that maybe shot Webleys back in the past, an automatic safety system. It is designed to look a lot like what you've seen on like your Webley Eclipses, and I believe off memory your Exocets and such like that. Nice bit of kit, always work perfectly on them. This one I will say is plastic, not metal, but again, we have to kind of maybe give a little bit of leeway considering the cost of the gun. As mentioned, she's comfortably below £200. As we come down a tad, you can also see, and you can hear there's a loud crow as I'm trying to record this, you can also see there is a metal trigger blade, which is always nice on a cheaper gun, and it is an adjustable trigger unit as well. There's a small screw hiding just behind the blade. Of course, that's a handling thing, so we'll talk a bit more about that when we get to that portion of the review. Moving slightly further up from the trigger blade, we have another really nice little feature on this gun, which is an anti-creep block built into the scope rail. This obviously is designed so if you're using standard mounts, it will stop the mount sliding back with recoil, which can happen with some of your lighter built sort of scope mounts, just single screw dovetail type stuff. With this, you shouldn't have any major problems with it. I would still recommend twin screw mounts at a minimum or a one piece like you can see we've got on here now, but it's a really nice feature to give your scope that little bit of extra security. Slightly lower down, you can see the rifle advertises it's got a power lock system. The power lock is actually the spring inside this gun. Apparently it's actually something quite special from what I've read online. But we'll see that for ourselves a bit later on. So it'll be interesting to look at the chronograph report, but on top of that to feel how the shot cycle is when the gun is actually in the shoulder. So we'll see how this is when we get to the handling section. As we move slightly further down, we also have the checkering on the force stock, which again, as mentioned earlier, on a budget gun, usually you don't get this sort of stuff. But what I really like about this isn't just the checkering, but the fact that they even went out of their way to etch the Webley logo into the checkering itself. Again, totally unnecessary on a budget gun, but at the same time, I like the fact they went that extra mile and put that in there. It's a really classy looking little thing with this on there. Then as we come further up, of course, this rifle is a brake barrel, but on this model, we have the Quantum Shroud. Now, what I'm really happy to report with this, they say it's a silencing shroud as well, but obviously we'll have a play with that a bit later on. What I really like about this is when you think budget gun and chunky shroud, you think, again, I'm not slanting the guns, but you think of 
Remington Sabre or you think of Remington Thunder Scepter or something Gamo where it's a lump of plastic. Webley have not done it that way. This is a lump of metal on the end, which, even if you don't like the shroud, you have to give it some points with the fact that they've actually gone for metal and not cheaped out on it. Right, well that's features out the way and done with then. Overall, we've got quite a nice bit of kit to go with the gun, considering, as mentioned, the price of it. It's a very pretty little thing as well, which is what I'm a huge fan of so far. But, obviously this means nothing if it's a load of cack when it's actually in your shoulder. So, why don't we get it there and see what we think. Okay, so the Webley VMX, what do we think? Well, first thing I'm going to say is what a lovely and solid feeling little gun this is. The checkering is the main culprit why I feel this way. It is really genuinely actually quite nice and deep. Don't get me wrong, I'm sure it hasn't quite got the same level of polish as what you'll get on your Virac spring guns, air arms, you name it. But it is genuinely deep, so it's not what we say on this channel, stripper rules. You can see it but not touch it. You can absolutely feel it, touch it, you name it, lick it if you want. But that is actually really quite nice. The other thing I'd say is it is a nice and light gun. The way I see this is it's basically, for me, it would be an ideal, basically, walked up style break barrel hunting rifle, depending on if it's powerful enough and also if it's accurate, which is the main thing when you're hunting. And we'll see that a bit later on. A couple of little things I'll mention. As we mentioned earlier, the safety on the rear is plastic. But again, bear in mind the price of the gun. I think we can let it get away with that. It's also a little stiff. You can see there from new, me pulling that out and then uh, switching it back on. The trigger guard is also plastic, but it does actually come with a metal trigger, which is always nice to see on a budget rifle. In general, handling-wise and feeling-wise, we'll say, it's quite nice. The other thing I'd say is, although you might not see it too great because it's sort of late on a winter's afternoon here at this moment in time freezing cold too so uh suffering for your uh, entertainment pleasure um no the grain on this is lovely when i first saw it i thought that could be walnut it's got long wavy grain it's not it's beach but they've done their best to basically make it look like walnut and i think i don't know maybe fanboyism is getting in the way here but i think that looks really quite nice especially this one what i will say another thing i really really like is when I saw that shroud in the pictures, don't get me wrong, obviously you have to pay more for it, so it should be made pretty nicely. Um, I originally thought, oh no, that's going to be a lump of plastic. Like, you know the Achilles heel I almost make it out to be of some budget guns, is you'll have a really pretty looking little gun, and then a massive glob of plastic on the end. Again, I've picked on the Remington Sabre for it, I've picked on the, even my beloved Cometas, I've picked on them for having like a basketball cage on the end. This is all metal. I'm very uh, proud to announce. In fact, if you can hear that, you probably can't. That probably sounded more like plastic than anything, but I assure you that is metal on there. Well done, uh, Webley, for that one. What I will also say is cocking effort. Mm, it's a little stiff. You can feel, you definitely feel like you're cocking a fairly full power spring in there. But the thing that I like about this is the lockup. Now, don't get me wrong, I do also like a lovely smooth lock up as well, but this, you can feel, stops there, if you can see that. You gotta give it that little, to close it. That feels really, really solid. Of course, I can't say too much. I've not had a Webley for a VMX for years and years, so who knows, it might last three minutes, but I highly doubt it with the way that feels. Right, so, auto safety off. Point it in a safe direction. Let's get a feel for the trigger. This is another area where budget guns can fall flat on their face. Not really getting a stage. Getting a fairly long pull too. And then it goes. Right, it is more of a single stage than a two stage trigger, if you could see that there. Uh, it is adjustable, but I will say it's not the lightest, it's not heavy either. You can feel, don't get me wrong, this is a straight out of the box gun, but you can feel almost like that the trigger sears are a little gritty. That will polish out with use, or obviously you can polish it yourself, just be careful of your warranty. But it's not unpleasant. The thing I have noticed is the sears don't entirely reset, which is what I'd say be careful of, only because they're a little bit rough at this moment in time. You can almost basically fake your own two-stage trigger. If you can see that, I've pulled about halfway back, stop, and then fire. 
So we had a little creep there then, but you can almost judge it to make it as two-stage trigger unit. To be fair, I have had far, far worse triggers than this. And again, with the adjuster, you might be able to tweak that out or lighten it up a little bit, something like that. We might have a play with that a little later on. But I quite like it. I think it's a nice little gun. Let's have a go now with the... Let's have a listen for twang. So now we're going to play with the uh, power lock system on here, which always, I'm a 90s kid. When I saw that, it reminded me of, you get the old Vauxhall Astras and things like that, and it'd have GTI with like red stripes going down the side of it. That's what this is reminding me of. Don't ask me why, me being an idiot, I'm sure. Let's have a little listen. So again, twang, Achilles heel of the cheap gun. Not really. There's a little bit, a tiny bit of spring noise in there. Whether that's the power lock spring at work, making it quite a dull thud to shoot, I don't know. But let's give that another go. I shall hush my gums and let you have a listen. So I'm putting you right up against the lapel mic. So you're probably, if anything, hearing it louder than what it actually is, but best way to find out. like a dry cough. That's basically all you get <coughs> with it. That's quite pleasant. I will say, like I say, trigger's not fantastic. It's not gonna massively amaze, but it won't massively insult either, I don't think, from what I can see here. Let's just have a look at the shot cycle. So I've been talking so much, I've not really been paying attention to how it recalls. So if I lean back a bit, hopefully you can see the front end of the muzzle as well, or the muzzle end, I should say. Mainly up and down, just a bounce, a tunk, like that. Not as smooth, obviously, as your 97s, TXs, such like that. But then, being a brake barrel, you wouldn't entirely massively expect it to, to be. Let's give that another go. So, look at the muzzle. Gripping semi, not firm, but secured in the shoulder, very loose up front. That is bloody quick. I'll say that, shot cycle was, and I was concentrating on it then, it's a chunk and it's on its way. So who knows, power lock. You might soon uh, start seeing power lock on your Virarcs and such like that, you never know. But I tell you what, I quite like that. I think that's a nice little gun. Of course, I'm reserving judgment ent entirely till we see the chronograph and accuracy test. But I tell you what, I'm going into marketing speech, stop me. Um, for the money, and I know that makes everyone cringe when you read and see that online, no matter what you're reviewing. I think that's quite a nice little thing, but again, means nothing if it's cack downrange. So, let's do the chronograph result or test, and let's see what she does downrange. Okay, so accuracy testing time. We've got the target set up at our 27 yard mark. We're gonna be shooting very traditionally with this gun, as in my eyes, it's a very traditional type of spring rifle. So it's gonna be shot on elbows on knees, so you can, we'll have the camera set up as well so you can see me in the background. Um, the other thing I'm just going to say is things working against the gun right now. Number one, there's a little breeze coming from where the farm opens up on the left-hand side. Hopefully we've got a bit of footage here so you can actually see the leaves blowing and such. And on top of that, my fingers are freezing cold, as it in fact is apparently minus two here. We've, I think my 
took a screenshot of like the weather graphic at that uh, at this moment in time we'll chuck on there so you can actually have a look and i cannot feel my fingertips and that in conjunction with a somewhat creepy trigger pull is not going to go very well i don't think but we'll see how this ends up you never know the rest of the gun does feel very sweet so we might be able to might be able to pull something out of the hat but we'll see what happens but yeah there's a lot going against the portal or bmx today but we'll see how we get on Okay, so accuracy testing is now over and done with. Let's see how the little rifle got on. I will say it has not got any warmer whatsoever. Like I say, my fingertips are completely numb. I cannot feel my nose. I cannot feel my lower jaw. If I start slurring my words, I do apologize. And there's other parts of me I can't even feel anymore and I won't go into any more details. So we've got JSB Heavy Exact down here. Main cluster doesn't quite sit under a 20 pence piece. You can see it's a little raggedy, you see it poking out there. 
with one shot going low. Not too bad though, really, considering it's a sub 200 pound gun and the fact that I can barely feel it when it's in my hands today. But as we come down, we have the RWS Superfields. These actually did okay. You can see it sits under the 20 pence piece there. But again, one flyer. I'm quite confident that's me. Probably, like I said, not quite feeling it. And in conjunction with the slightly creepy trigger, it must be said, not really gelling today. Barracuda match, not even really gonna bother. The 20 pence piece probably sits between the pellet holes we've got down there. And for good measure, we've got one down there because it's big Dan's air guns and we always get one wild flyer. Well, to be fair, I think that entire group is a wild flyer, but moving on. Then we get to the Acupels. Now these upset me because I actually, a little while ago, we put a Facebook post up when we first started trading with these. And we put these Acupels through a different, obviously, VMX, and it shot beautifully well. Sadly, on camera, this one in particular, and it goes to show each barrel is different even though it's the same gun, couldn't replicate that. That's also two pellets in that hole down there. I was hoping one of them went in here, but we've got to be honest, nope, it's two down there. As we come along, though, the interesting bit, and these are by far the cheapest pellets on test, the RWS Diablo Basics. Now, with these, we had a real tight little group in there. You can see the 20 pence piece absolutely dwarfs it, but sadly, we did get two shots off to the left. I'm quite confident these are me. The reason why I say that, if you take a look, horizontally, it's smack on with the rest of the group. And I will be using these again later, because I think they definitely deserve a second chance. It's not the gun's fault, it's the fleshy numbit pulling the trigger today. The best group was the JSB Exact. You can see there we've got a really nice little three-shot clover leaf just underneath the ball, and we've got two shots going slightly high there. The entire group comfortably sits under a 20 pence. I want to pull it down a bit. There we go. Sits under a 20 pence piece. And again, considering 27 yards, elbows on knees, and you can see the pretty color of my fingers at this moment in time, I think that's pretty damn good for a sub 200 pound gun. But we're gonna push it on further, as we always do, see what it can do at range, and see how we get on. So, 45 yards, what do we reckon? Webley VMX. I think Diablo Basic, I know it's a flat head, but we'll see how it does at that range. Diablo Exact, and you know what? Maybe even Superfield, see how they get on. Let's push it out and see how we do. Okay, so accuracy testing at 45 is now over and done with. How did we get on? The result was 
pretty impressive to be fair. Granted, we had a couple of flyers, but let's be fair, you could probably give me a Fiendwork Bower and Anschutz target rifle, and I would still find a way of getting the flyer. It's a me thing. But we've got, with the RWS Diablo Basics, four pellets which sit pretty much almost I'm personally going to give it that. I'm going to say that's pretty much a 20 pence group. If you can see that there with one shot going high and left. Again, the trigger does definitely play a role in the accuracy here. And by that, I mean it is definitely a unit you need to get used to. It's not like your sort of ultra high end, sort of almost hair trigger target guns. It is a budget trigger, so bear that in mind. But when you do start gelling with it, you can get some incredible results. Now, with the JSBs, we have got two groups, and you can see as well, it's not exactly a calm day today either. We've got a little bit of a gust on the go. We've got two groups here because, frankly, they annoyed me, and I wanted just to get that one real solid cluster, and we still, sadly, damn run out of talent, or talent he's got, and got flyers. So, this group, one high, one low. But I tell you what, what potential you've got there. That's three pellets through almost the same hole. Again, 45 yards. That is incredible. So we then did a second group. I thought, come on, Dan, you can do it. We couldn't, <laughs> no surprises. But I tell you what, that's not half bad. If we put that 20 pence piece over the cluster, you can see that is a 20 pence group with one flyer just going off to the right. This gun has got so much accuracy. It just needs a slightly better trigger. Now the good news with this, and why this gun should still definitely, I think, be on people's shopping lists, and it deserves way more respect than it gets, this trigger, I believe, is very similar, if not the same, to what, and we may have mentioned this earlier, to what you get with your gamo units and such like that, and some of your SMKs, like your XS19, has got a similar unit. Admittedly, not as nice a trigger as what this has got, you've actually got a proper metal blade on there. It's a very similar unit, I believe, looking at it, and if you have a look online, you, you need to spend pennies, if that, to transform that unit into something really quite nice. With that done, I am 99% confident that these groups here will not only occur on a regular basis, but they would be even better. The trigger is the only thing, really, that needs to be brought into consideration when you're looking at the VMX. Everything else, so far, this is like a final verdict before we even get there, but never mind, is fantastic on the little thing. But anyways, that's it for our 45 yard accuracy test. What do I think? I think it's an incredible little thing. It's not often, even here, you get two pellets in the same hole with a gun at this price. But we'll stop that there. I don't want to sound like I'm advertising the gun more than reviewing it. So let's move on now to final verdict and see just what we think of the Webley VMX. But I think you can probably tell where this is going. So final verdict of the Webley VMX Quantum and what do we think? Well, as always, we like to nitpick on this channel, and we always say there's no such thing as the perfect rifle. The single main drawback of the VMX is the trigger. It's not that it's a terrible unit, although it's far from a record, but it's because the rest of the rifle is so potentially great that it stands out. On a lesser rifle, or even another rifle in the same price point, you might not even notice it quite so much, but here it's a bit like a triangular wheel on a Jaguar E-Type, or a Purdy with the stock from an SMK B2. The recoil is also sharp, although it's mainly straight back into your shoulder with no nasty jumps like some budget springers. The lock time is fast, and by the time you notice it, it's practically already gone, with the pellet soaring on its way. So that's pretty much it. Oh, and the trigger guard and safety toggle is plastic, but to give the VMX credit, unlike its competition, the breech and shroud is all chunky metal. Not even some premier brands manage that. Looking at you, HW110. So the positives then. The little gun has a ton of potential. Even without a trigger tweak, the rifle shoots excellently and with more time to adapt to the unit, I've no doubts the flyers would be gone. You can see on camera what the rifle is capable of. The rifle is also very powerful and consistent being a full power rifle for here in the UK with almost a single digit spread throughout 20 shots from new. It also has the joint best auto safety design of any new Springer, and although this bit is purely subjective, I think if it had a metal trigger guard, it'd be one of the prettiest little rifles on the market. It also doesn't feel cheap, which is a hell of an achievement for a budget gun. The stock is lovely, and the all-metal shroud is a brilliant touch. To sum it all up, when I'm usually done with a review rifle, especially if it's a PCP, it's put back into its case and then packed away. 
With the VMX, I spent the whole afternoon around the farm shooting it and having a blast. That, for me, is the sign of a great rifle. Anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.